Hey everybody, Andre here, and today I want to talk about Magnetic Layout in Sibelius Ultimate. Magnetic Layout is a really, really fantastic tool that helps you clean up your scores and easily keep track of a variety of objects throughout the Sibelius program. I think it's one of the great strengths of Sibelius above other kinds of notation softwares. Uh, but sometimes it can be a little bit temperamental. So I want to show you the basics and then give you a couple of examples on how I manipulate magnetic layout in my own music. So first of all, you should know how to access magnetic layout. Now magnetic layout is automatically turned on. Um, so if you don't really want to think about it, it's there for you by default. Um, but if you want to disable it for a certain object, you have to manually select. So I'm going to just randomly click on this Forte sign here. Um, as I click it, notice what you see. Notice the grayed out images. So in reality, this is where the object actually is. But magnetic layout is assigning this Forte sign a position slightly higher in order for it to align better with the Forte above it as well as the other dynamic objects on the horizontal plane. So you see these dotted or these dashed lines. That's what magnetic layout is doing. It's helping you align everything automatically. Now let's say for example, I don't want to do that. I want to manually turn off magnetic layout. So if you're using a mouse or a trackpad or whatever, you're going to right click on the object. And then you're somewhere in the middle here. There's a thing that says magnetic layout. And you just hover over that and you select off. Now notice what happens. Immediately that forte sign snaps to that formerly gray location. And now you can move this forte wherever you want. You can have it be free as a bird, no care in the world, but of course it's going to potentially collide with other objects. Now, if you want to turn magnetic, magnetic layout back on, just do the same thing. You right click, magnetic layout, and on. And then because you've messed around with it, you'd have to readjust, but it, you can really quickly snap it back into position. And sometimes it really doesn't want to do it. So I've, I've managed to get it to line up with horizontal plane but now it's <laughs> not cooperating with the with the uh, vertical plane oh here we go so it takes a little bit of trial and error and I moved it to a spot where it has synced up with uh, Forte but now if you can see now it's attached to the wrong uh, stave there we go so it, it takes a little bit of time as I showed you but not it's not so bad and then you can get it back on or of course you can just Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, forever until you get to uh, the original spot. But really, I mean, that took uh, half a minute to sort it back out. So if you do turn magnetic layout off and you realize that it was a grave error, you can either fuss with it until it gets to the spot where it should be, or you can just, you know, undo Control Z um, until, until that it is back to where it needs to be. Okay, so I wanted to show you also how to turn magnetic layout on and off uh, without going right click. So this is the long way. So basically you wanna go up to the layout tab here and you want to just click magnetic layout. So the difference here is that notice what happens to the whole page. On, off, on, off. So this button up here toggles the whole score. Whereas right clicking on the object, you actually can get really specific. So pretty powerful here. If you really want to have complete control and not let Sibelius decide for you, you can just hit this button. There are some other things here. Um, this is a pretty clean score, but you can click the find next and find previous collisions. So that means anything that's red, you will snap to it. So let's see if we can find one. There we go. So here's a 
tempo marking, molto retardando, that is highlighted red. And magnetic layout is saying that there is something wrong here. Sibelius is, has figured out that you know there's some collision that it really doesn't like, um, and it is unable to do it. So you can manually try to mess with it until it works. I imagine it's at the back end here, so I might have to pull it back until it works. But I'm not super concerned. It doesn't look like it's colliding with anything, so I might just leave it alone. The next collision over here on this fermata I think it's kind of obviously saying that we need more space and notice how it just went away so I just dragged down this lower staff and it uh, worked out fine I think that's the problem here too yeah I just dragged it down and it, we're good to go so that's an easy way to find collisions and that's a, that's actually all of them great clean score um, freeze positions I rarely use this um, but basically, it, it sets all the positions uh, where Sibelius thinks they should be. Um, but again, you have to select objects here. I, I got to tell you, I rarely use this function. I don't, I don't really find a need for it in my own uh, work. So if you wanted to get really specific with magnetic layout, you can actually go into, again, layout tab, magnetic layout, and then this drop down menu. So you can actually select which kinds of objects you would like Sibelius to automatically assign magnetic layout to. So if you know the specific things that you want it to help with, uh, you can have it all selected or deselected. I just leave it all on, honestly. Um, the box line, for whatever reason, by default is set to off. I don't know why that is. Uh, but everything else is really good to go. Now, what's interesting, what happens if you uh, unset it, is that you no longer have access to these options. So if you click this, you can. there's a whole series of parameters that you can set. Um, so again, I very rarely use this, but you can mess with this area and it'll allow you to get very specific with the kinds of spacing rules and collision rules that you want Sibelius to operate under. Okay, so I wanna show you uh, one of the ways that I use magnetic layout, uh, specifically that toggle specific objects thing. So let's say I wanted to add a optional note above this. So here's a C. I want to bring the C. Um, this is no for no musical reason other than to show what's going on. So I want to say that this high C, for some reason, uh, is an optional note. So what I can do is I'm going to just create a text box. So what I did was I hit Control T, arrow becomes blue, and then I'm going to make a parentheses, just like that. And so notice. If I'm trying to use the arrow keys, I'm trying to get this parentheses around that C, it just will not go. There is no way in the world that you will be able to make that work. So if you didn't know about magnetic layout, you would probably be tempted to go to create one object here, create one object here, and then mess with it. But you can see how this could be tedious and also kind of hard to align these parentheses. So, so that's one way to do it. Took a lot of clicks. Or what you can do, Control-T, make the two parentheses, magnetic layout, off. And now they're perfectly lined up. So that's just one example of what you can do with this. Uh, lots of layering. Uh, that normally Sibelius would be very, very unhappy with you doing. Um, speaking of layering, uh, you can check out my video on multiple time signatures at the same time. Uh, and I use the toggling of magnetic layout on and off to great effect in that video. So I'll make sure to leave a link down in the description below. But that's basically it. Um, there's not really much more to say. Uh, you can see there's a lot of gray objects uh, here. This is a this is a hidden object. So if I make it sh if I make it shown, um, I have revealed the object, 
and it wants to go way up here for no reason. So when you hide it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't go to the spot. Uh, when it's shown is the only time that the magnetic layout is applied. But hidden objects like this time signature, this uh, metronome mark, they are unaffected by magnetic layout. So I hope this video was useful for you. Uh, I hope that you now have a perhaps slightly better understanding of what magnetic layout is and what it can do for you. It's not a terribly difficult topic, but um, it can be a little bit temperamental. So knowing how to toggle it on and off quickly is gonna be your best friend. And then again, you can get pretty specific in the parameters that you want it to operate under. Um, but it's one of the great strengths of Sibelius, I, f I feel, uh, over other kinds of notation software. It really makes everything line up really nicely and quickly. So if you found this video useful, please uh, consider liking it. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel. I have lots of different content here uh, from Sibelius tutorials to my own personal music. Um, and if you want to hear about other Sibelius-related topics, do leave a comment below uh, and let me know what you'd want me to cover.